back when when we uh, we first spoke, one of the things you, you you had sent out a Facebook message that that day, and you had said, you know, if anyone knows where Andrew is, please just come out. Yes. Now now you know we found that police have, have done some work and they've found what what goes through your mind. I'm grateful the police did their job. They found the man and how they got him, I have no idea. We're not privy to any information as it may jeopardize the case. We have a little bit of relief because now we know that Andrew is not coming back and they've got the killer. T take me through what yesterday was like for you and, and we'll, we'll hear from both of you. I was shocked yesterday. I got the phone call at 12.10 to say that they had made an arrest in the morning and that after one they would be making an announcement on the news. I was shocked but relieved and I, I the only thing I said was oh my god oh my god and I don't remember much after that it took a while to sink in and then I immediately phoned my sister and my two brothers. They had called you earlier but you told me you learned most of the details actually from the press conference. Yes I did yes the police just told me um, they had the killer and they were not going to tell me anything else. I asked a question, has, has Andrew's body been found? And the answer was no. And then I listened after one o'clock and found out more information. How did you find out yesterday? Pat called me. Pat called yeah, as, she, yeah, as he did yeah. when, when Pat, when he got that phone call from your sister, what goes through your mind? Oh, it's, as she said, I mean, it's, it's, you're horrified. I mean, you're shocked, it's awful, but there is some relief in knowing, you know, the end, you know, like not knowing where he is, or was, was harder almost than anything else. Like you spend your whole day, is he alive, is he dead? You know, you worry about him constantly. Is he suffering, is he being tortured? So now that we know that he's dead, then that part has ended, you know, now we can stop worrying about it. And now we just go on with the next chapter, which is, you know, you know that we know the person that's been arrested for his murder, but now they have to go through those, those steps, right? And we'll... If we'll be there in court when that happens. If you had something to, to say, we, we know the individual hasn't been proven guilty in court yet, though yes. police believe this is the man. Yes. If you had something to say to him, do you have any words, that, anything that you would want to say to him? I wouldn't waste my time saying anything to him, if you, if you ask me. Well, I think I would tell him to let us know. Like, if, if you, you know, let us know where everyone is. If there's more than one person, you know, which they suspect more. You know, tell us. Let us let us have Andrew back. We want him back. His remains. The fact that those haven't been found yet. What is that like for you? Well, as you can imagine, it's it, it is as awful as him being missing. But at least, you know, we have some closure. You but see, we want him back still. You see that sign behind you yes. of your brother. Yes. A lot of effort and a lot of friends and family oh, and yes. yourselves included, obviously, and the media did a lot of work to try and drum up support to find him. Yes. What, what would you say to, to, to specifically his friends who really oh. took some leadership in this? We, we would thank him from the bottom of our hearts because they are the ones that set up the Facebook page. They kept it in the media. The media kept it in the public eye. And because of that, the police received money. The, those teams were set up, those special investigative teams. And because of all of that, because of his friends, the media, and the police, working together. It's because of that he was, you know, he's been arrested. arrested, yes. Patricia, when we spoke back in August, you had <laughs> said, you know, this was hard to sleep. You thought about Andrew going to bed, you thought about Andrew waking up, and you, like your sister uh, and your whole family, I'm sure, were looking for some sort of closure. Does this bring some sense of closure for you, or is this another step in the journey? It's a small closure. Um, the next step is proving him guilty and having him put away. And lastly, we just want Andrew back. We want Andrew back so that we can put him to rest. You, you two and Andrew shared a special relationship when he was a little guy. Patricia, you remember telling me a little bit about taking on a bit of a mother team role with Andrew. Share a little bit about, if you could, uh, your relationship with him. I was 14, Pat was 15 when he was born. And he really, when mom brought him home from the hospital, it was like she just brought this live doll and handed him to us. And it was like, we took him everywhere yeah. once he got to be about three, yeah. four. And yeah. Yeah. we made, we wouldn't allow her to get his, his hair cut. Yeah. We dressed him in what we wanted him in, which was tie dye, -dye t shirts <laughs> and bell bottoms because it was the hippie era. Yeah. He had long blonde hair, 
beautiful. He was a beautiful boy. And, you know, we just, we did. We took him everywhere with us, concerts, movies. Wherever we went, we, ta- you know, we dragged Downtown, him along Toronto, with us. Conservation yeah. areas. He was, yeah. he, yeah. and I think my mom was quite happy that we took him. <laughs> yeah, he was the last child. He was number six. So she was ready to sit back and relax. So we took on the role. So he is special to us. He's like our firstborn is really what Andrew is mm-hmm. like. Yes, that's true. The fact he's not with us anymore, and you know that. Yeah. It's hard to realize that the youngest of the family is the first to go. Yeah. That's that I find very difficult because yeah. he was so much younger than our oldest brother. He was yeah. born in '67, and Ted was born 49. in 1949. So there's a big difference between yeah. the six children. And I always thought it would be the oldest and then the youngest. It's at the, the end. natural order. Yes. But uh, that's it's, hard. It's yeah. It's not now. Yeah. That's a tough one to swallow. Yes. yes, it is. If you had anything to say to Andrew, huh. we love you. That's all. I just hope he's at peace. Yeah. He's not. He's not in pain. He's not suffering. It's over for him. Knowing that there could be more victims, what uh, you know? What, what goes through your mind when you hear that? That this individual could. It could be a serial situation, a serial case. I just hope they find them all. Yeah. They identify everybody that they that that they believe has been murdered, and they can their families can also have a little bit of closure. Yeah. I mean, we we lived with it for seven months, but some of these, if these missing other missing men are part of this man's victims, they've been living with it since 2010, 2012. So, you know, we've had a faster closure than some. So when Andrew was the catalyst for the whole thing because it was because of his friends and in the media and the police that this that this man has finally been caught. This man, uh, we know that Andrew uh, didn't always keep in touch so much with the family as he had uh, in, in uh, you know in the past. Had you ever heard about Bruce and this individual? Never, never. He was private about that part of his life. He, we did not know who his um, most of the people that he had relationships with. We did not know them. Yeah. He kept his life separate. He had his family life, you know, in Pickering, and then he had his town life, his his life here in Toronto, and he didn't uh, really want us to meet each other, shall we say. In closing, if you had something to share with, with our viewers, with the public, about Andrew, how would you want Andrew to be remembered? Wonderful, kind, loving, brother and friend. Yeah. A good, a good person. Yes. He probably did nothing wrong in his life ever. That's how I remember him. Generous.